Hello, good evening, and welcome to Booster Field, where tonight on WOSN we've got a fantastic matchup in the Midwest Athletic Conference between the number one ranked visiting Versailles Tigers and the number one ranked homestanding Marion Local Flyers. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Mark Shine, and this is the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer, serving Lima for over 100 years. We are proud to call this home. And Mark, don't get a lot of regular season matchups bigger than this. You get the number one teams and two divisions going up against one going up up against one another on a Friday night. You know what, Garrett? There's a good chance that these two teams will win state championships in their respective divisions. They're that talented. They're that well coached. They're that well balanced. Obviously, lots of things could happen between now right. and the, you know, the first of December, but these are two very good football teams. They're both ranked number one in their respective divisions. Playing for a MAC championship perhaps this evening. You know, Colbar's got something to say about that down the road, but this is a huge football game in the MAC tonight. Yeah, a lot of talented football players on the field tonight, and when you take a look at what the uh, – we'll, we'll step aside, we'll come back, and we'll take a look at the Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys to the game when we return here on as we get ready for this number one versus number one matchup here on WOSN. Back here at Booster Stadium getting set for this number one versus number one showdown between the Marion Local Flyers and the Versailles Tigers. Time now for our Lima Chevrolet Cadillac keys of the game. Lima Chevrolet Cadillac is the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer, serving Lima for over 100 years. They're proud to call this home. And Mark, when you take a look at what needs to happen tonight, first for the Versailles Tigers and for both squads, really, yeah. what are the biggest keys to the game tonight? You know what, Garrett? These two teams are so similar in what they've done this year. We're, gonna, we're looking at just three keys total tonight. Both of them are very strong defensively. Versailles has given up just 14 points on the season. That includes three shutouts. Marion Local has given up tw uh, 47 this year, 26 in their opening game to Wapak. So the last three weeks, their last four weeks, they have given up just 21 total points. So both teams start with a very heavy emphasis on their defense. But they will both have diverse offenses to work against for sales. Quarterback Michael Osborne, running back Joel Garrett, and seven different wideouts have made a significant impact for them this year, and they average 35 points a game. For Marion Local, quarterback Justin Knopf, he's got a trio of running backs past Heitkamp and Laws, and he's thrown to 11 different receivers this year. So very balanced offensive teams and very diversified. I think the game might well come down to a specials team type thing. It will it be a, a turnover that makes a big, mm -hmm. significant a, a, a part of the Bass football game? Will it be a penalty at a crucial time? Will it be a special team score? Something special, something different happens out of the ordinary because these teams are so well balanced tonight. It's been a while since the Versailles Tigers have beaten the Marion local Flyers. It was 11 years ago today, on September 20th, 22nd, I beg your pardon, 2012. Now, Versailles has gotten close a couple of different times. In 2021, they played to a two-point Marion Local win. They went to overtime a few years ago. Marion Local uh, has enjoyed a nice streak here in this series that Versailles would love to topple tonight. Well, you know what, Garrett? We did this game a year ago at Versailles, and the Versailles kids genuinely thought they had a chance to win the football game. It got away from them, and Marion Local won the football game, and Versailles players were absolutely crushed and angry, I think, when that particular game came to an end. The difference, I think, tonight, Marion Local comes into this game knowing they can win the football game. I think early on, Versailles has to prove that they belong here and that they can win the football game and then carry that in through the last three quarters. So that's our Lima Chevrolet Cadillac pregame show and keys to the game. Lima Chevrolet Cadillac is the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. Marion Local won the coin toss, elected to defer until the second half. So Versailles will receive the opening kickoff of tonight's ball game, and we'll get set here in this uh, anticipated matchup between these two traditional powers. Versailles, of course, several state championships under their belt. Marion Local's won 13 of them under the tutelage of Tim Goodwin, including the last two. 37 straight yep. wins here for the Marion Local Flyers. While Versailles, and we talked about it earlier, they've got state championship aspirations as well in Division Six. I would agree with that. We've talked to some people beforehand. A lot of people are going, you know what? It's 11 weeks from tonight, these two teams could be playing for state championships. Already past the halfway point of the high school football season in the regular season. But Versailles and Marion Local looking to play all the way into December as Carson Bills has the football teed up, ready to send it away. Michael Osborne. 
Back deep to return. And this one instead with little Lane Bergman. Bergman will try to come to the near side. Out of the grasp of one Marion local tackler, but spun down shy of the 20-yard line. And that is where the Tigers will start their first drive tonight. Shades of some of what we saw last week against the New Bremen. Marion local special teams have been outstanding the last several weeks. And now we'll see what Versailles will do with the first possession of the game. So the ball spotted at the 18-yard line of Versailles. Michael Osborne, the do-everything quarterback for the Tigers, will line up in the shotgun. He's thrown for exactly 600 yards through the first five weeks of the season. Has six passing touchdowns, also six rushing touchdowns as the Flyers show a little blitz on the first play before backing out of it. Osborne will fake a pitch, keep it himself off left tackle. Broke through one tackle, got out to the 22-yard line. So, again, just a couple. Uh, the ball came loose, Marion Local saying. But the signal was Osborne was down. Could pick up on first down to pick up five. Going to see a lot of that action this evening. Give Osborne an opportunity to pick his hole behind that offensive line. A couple of high-flying offenses tonight. Marion Local averaging 46 points a game. For sales, averaging just over 35. As Osborne barks out the signal, and then we'll look to the sideline for more instructions. Joel Garrett joining Osborne in the backfield, wearing number nine. He's spent time in and out of the lineup with a shoulder injury. You see the harness on his right shoulder as Osborne looks to throw. It's caught by Bergman on the far sideline. He picks up. A structure first down on the second play of the game. A little drag pattern. Got a receiver open in the flat. That's a 12-yard pickup and a first down to the 35. So the nose of the football right on that 35-yard line. And really, that's kind of what Versailles needs is uh, to be as efficient as possible against this Marion local defense. That was a nice touch pass that time. Put it right in his receiver's hands so he could make some action and pick up that 12. Osborne in the gun one more time. Two tight ends to each side of the formation. As Bergman will go in motion, they'll hand off to Garrett. His first carry spun after off of a would-be tackler. A game of about two there on first down for the first carry for the senior. Tried to go off the left side of the formation. The defense reacted well for that couple of yard pickup and second down. A little different second down compared to the first one for Versailles where you pick up eight yards there on, or five yards on first down. Makes Second down much easier. Instead, it'll be second in the long eight. This first quarter of action brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac. 10-25 on the scoreboard as Osborne has two receivers to the bottom of your screen. Hands off to Garrett. Spins out of a tackler before he's brought down. Drew Laws, one of the final flyers there on the stop. Pulled the left guard, and when they did so, the linebacker shot through that gap and was able to, to make the hit. So third and seven. Upcoming here for Versailles on this first drive as the Marion local faithful make some noise for their defense. It's a team that has been run oriented through the year. Osborne's had a good year with touch passing with the football. But they would prefer not to be in a seven yard situation on third down. Three receivers to Osborne's right in the gun. Garrett, that same way. He'll roll to the near side to senior looking for some room. Reverses, still scampering, picks up very close to the first down. He's going to be just shy. Needed to get to the 45, and the official on the near sideline got him at the 44 and a half. What a nice job. And first of all, the defensive backfield, he was back there a long time and couldn't find anybody to throw to. And then Oswald made a really nice run to his left, broke a couple of tackles, and boy, Coach Jones has a decision to make early on in this one. Fourth and one. Not even one, really. And looks like for sales will go for it. First time under center for Osborne. James Schmidtmeyer, the man in motion. And they'll turn and hand off to Garrett. Garrett's got the first down, out past the midfield stripe. Another structure first down comes on fourth and one for the Versailles Tigers. How about the guts to go ahead and do that and then the execution to go off left tackle. Uh, they have run left several times yes, already sir. in this and I think they've got to something they want to try over on that particular part of their formation. Joel Garrett, 5'10", 200 pound senior, 31 carries coming into tonight, just under 230 yards, has six touchdowns on those 31 carries. That's a that's a nice efficient clip there for high school yeah, running back. It really is. And 
This, this is Versailles doing something that Marion Local likes to do. They had the football for three and a half minutes and a first down here. After that structure first down, they'll go Garrett to the right side. Got back to the line of scrimmage and a gain of maybe a yard and a half on the seventh play of the drive. Pulled two guys that time and tried to go right. Marion Local had that one snuffed out pretty well. Eight minutes to go on the Holman Insurance scoreboard here in this opening quarter. Versailles taking plenty of time off the clock. Osborne in the gun with two receivers to each side of the formation here on second and eight. He'll now look to the sideline with James Schmidtmeyer joining him in the backfield. Quarterback draw. Jukes one tackler out to the 40. It's a gain of five yards. It brings up third and five. Design play, get the defensive backs and the linebackers trying to drop into coverage. And then use the big Osborne, 5'11", 185, and put them in a manageable situation. If it was four down territory before, Garrett, yeah, it's, right. it's, four down it's only right getting now. more four down yes, territory. Sir. It's there looking to get into that Betty's Natural Food red zone here on this opening drive. Seven minutes remaining on the home and insurance scoreboard in this first quarter. Osborne with a wing to his right and Garrett to his left. Fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Got stalemated. Just shy of the structure first down. And it will be fourth and short one more time. Going off the left side of formation again. Here we are at fourth and one again from the 38. Marion Local will take out a couple of defensive backs, bring in a, another nose guard and another linebacker. We'll see how the Tigers want to play this. Went under center and gave it to Garrett the last time in his situation. So we approach the midway point here of this first Lima Chevrolet Cadillac quarter. Osborne sends Schmidtmeyer in motion to the near side. Garrett dots the eye, gets the handoff, off right tackle, has the structure first down. Needed to get to the 36 yard line, got to the 35. And at the 10th play of the drive, extends the drive for the Tigers. Yet another first down. And as you said, Garrett, this will be the 11th play of the drive, and they have now possessed the football for half of the quarter. I, I was just going to say, Mark, this is about best case scenario yeah. that, you know, when Ryan Jones drew up the way the yes, first sir. quarter went, I don't know that it could have gone much better than this. And they put, just got to cap seven it off. on the board. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was one of their keys of the yeah. game. They said they got to score TDs in the red zone as Osborne rolls out. Got him open deep. He'll let, him, let it fly. Nearly the one hand catch from Luke Kaiser would have been his first catch of the season. Instead, it's incomplete, the first incompletion by Osborne tonight. He was looking all the way at his tight end, who had stopped at one point and then realized he had a clear path to the end, so the DB was in front of him. And they tried to lob it over them, just couldn't get a hand on enough to, to snag and bring it in. And now we're looking at second and 10, though. Yeah, one of those one man routes where it's essentially if this guy's open, hit him. If he's not, run it. And Osborne got just a hair indecisive there. And since they have run the football on 9 out of 11 plays, that one stops the clock for the first time. So 5.35 to go on the home and insurance scoreboard here in the first quarter as Osborne stands in the pocket, fires over the middle of the field, high, the intended target, Bergman, and now third and 10. And Bergman was open, came across the middle, kind of a, of a uh, post pattern, came across the middle and just missed him between the two safeties. Running back Joel Garrett will check out of the ball game. As the Tigers will send Zach Meyer, senior, into the ball game. And at the wide receiver spot. Got Schmidt Schmidtmeyer back yep. in the block for <laughs> him, too. Yep. on third and ten. It's pretty obvious what his job's going to be. Just one catch on the season. And he's Blitz. pressured immediately, spins out of it. Has to meander back to the near sideline. Avoids another rush, looking to get rid of it. Does, has a man Whoa, wide a open. It's caught by Meyer inside the 10 yard line. <laughs> so the structure first down puts him inside the Betty's Natural Foods red zone after a great individual effort there by Michael Osborne. Spun out of a tackle on the blitzing linebacker, able to avoid another rusher and fires the pigskin down the near sideline for a big gain. Well, Michael Osborne. 
great. I mean, everyone's thinking, okay, here's a sack, and no, he gets away from that and then spins to the sideline and still has enough presence to look downfield for a 28-yard pickup. Tigers will go under center this time. Garrett, the deep man in the I formation. Schmidt-Meyer in motion to the top of the screen. They'll turn and pitch to Garrett. He stood up. Flyers try to rip the football out, nearly got it. On that first and goal. Might have got a yard, but a very tough yard to get as the Flyers flowed to the football very well. For sales head coach Ryan Jones told us, got to score touchdowns in the red zone. Can't settle for field goals. Have to cap off drives. 15th play of the drive upcoming. And here for the sales. The yeah, I was just going to say that. the football for eight minutes. Home and insurance scoreboard on the clock continues to tick as we approach the four-minute mark. Play clock winding down. Osborne just gets it off, looks to fire. Thrown right, caught by Bergman for wow. the Busher Electric touchdown. A 15-play, 82-yard drive capped off by a seven-yard touchdown pass from Michael Osborne to Bergman. Bergman's first touchdown of the season makes it 6 nothing Tigers. Well-timed pattern, caught him in the middle of the defense. And now here's Garrett for the PAT attempt. Garrett the senior. Osborne to hold. The kick is through the uprights and good. In Versailles, leads Mary Local 7-0 on the Holman Insurance scoreboard. We'll step aside, come back with more first quarter action here in this number one versus number one battle on WOSA. Tonight's Marion Local Premier Sponsor is OPAC and Osgood for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. Call OPAC. 15 play, 82 yard touchdown drive by Versailles. Took more than eight minutes off the clock, and they'll send it away deep. And it will be corralled by the Marion local Flyers as Vic Holscher had his heels on the goal line. So the Flyers start their first drive on the 20-yard line. Well, Garrett, if we talked about in the pregame, you know, does Mar about how Versailles needed to come out and play well early and say, yes, we can win the football game, and they certainly did on that possession. They, they you know, completed a couple of first downs on fourth down situations. They had a couple of good passes, a great play by Osborne, the quarterback so far. And this is a very, very good start for Versailles, and now we'll see if hometown Flyers can answer. Justin Knopf will trot out on the field, the starting quarterback for the Flyers. 12 touchdowns to three interceptions so far this season. Also has two touchdowns on the ground. He's the leading rusher so far for the blue and gold, and he'll be in the shotgun. A running back to his right for the Flyers' first play, coming under four minutes to go in the first. Knopf has to scramble, and is brought down by Dominic Bargy. They were surrounding Holscher that time. They tried to get him on an in route. And uh, Versailles was prepared to play that and had to tuck it down and ended up being a sack. Yeah, Andrew Pullman, the wide receiver, broke deep late, but Knopf was already pressured. And that'll bring up second and 11 here for the Flyers. Go 15 plays and score, and then get a sack on your first defense. <laughs> Could play. not be a better start yeah. for the Tigers. Knopf in a gun. Hands off the law is a wow. huge hole to run through. Nearly powered through a tackler. Got out past the 30-yard line for a structure first down. But you could have driven a truck through that hole, Mark. That was just man-on-man -man blocking. Everybody fired out straight ahead, and they knocked people down. And you, you were right. That hole was huge. All the way out to the 33 makes it a 14-yard four pickup. 14 yards on second and 11 brings up a structure first down. So Flyers just shy of the 35-yard line. With Knopf, three wide receivers to his right, and Laws behind him. He'll turn and fire quickly to Holscher. A penalty flag comes down. Yep. He got a block in the back. Yep. Plain a day, plain as day. Flyer faithful don't like it. But well, all the officials <laughs> wearing black and orange called it real quick. <laughs> like it was very quick. Yep. 
And, and really, that's just a play to get one of your best playmakers, yes. the football in space. Uh, really good playmaker, great speed, good hands. This is where we have that new rule this year about where we assess the penalty on holding. Goes to the line of scrimmage rather than the spot of the foul. We mentioned the great efficiency of Joel Garrett with six rushing touchdowns on 31 carries for Versailles. Vic Holscher, six touchdowns on 25 catches for Marion Loco. Yeah, Woulda, coulda, shoulda had a couple more last week on special teams. The handoff to Laws makes one man miss. Got back to the 30-yard line, so a gain of two and a half on second down. Of course, Tim Goodwood uses a whole bunch of running backs this year. Parker Hess will be back there, some Laws, some Ethan Heitkamp, some. They kind of spread all that around, and between the three-headed monster, they pick up a lot of yards on the ground. They can throw the quarterback in, and the ground game has been very good. Of course, the whole offense has been good this year. Well, and their running back stable is without Kyle Lottie, yes. who's one of the, the best running backs in small school football in the state. has been banged up a little bit. So in addition to three guys who have four touchdowns, five touchdowns, and seven touchdowns, you got a guy who I think ran for 19 touchdowns last year. Holster, the man in motion, here on second and 13. Knopf stands in the pocket, fires to Holscher up the seam, has the first down and more, crossed the 50-yard line before Vic Holscher is brought down by Blake Henry and Michael Osborne, but a big play on second and long for the second time for the Flyers. They even grabbed Holscher. He came off the line of scrimmage. He was trying to get open down the seam route, and they grabbed him. He still got past that, and Knopf put the ball right on the money. They'll go under center this time. Laws the counter. Gets to the 40-yard line, brought down just shy of the first down marker. A gain of nine by Laws on the carry, and Marion Local starting to get into a rhythm offensively. That pass was just perfect a moment ago. Then they found space off the right side of the formation that time for that run. Here's a very interesting call on second and, and one. Holscher lined up in a slot to the left of Knopf as they go two backs in the backfield. Knopf puts it in the gut of Ethan Heitkamp. And they've got enough for the structure first down. Under a minute to go here on the Holman Insurance scoreboard here in this first quarter. For Stales, or Marion Local, I beg your pardon, start to put together a drive here. This has been big boy football when they ran the football. They, they haven't trapped. They've just been man on man, knocking people off the ball and then back and finding space. Two wide receivers split out wide to each side as Knopf has Heitkamp in the gun next to him on the left. First and 10. Knopf will keep it himself. Able to get out to the 30-yard line. Gain of two, which is likely the final play here in this first quarter. So the numbers will tick off the home and insurance scoreboard. We've played one quarter of action in this number one versus number one matchup. Versailles takes eight minutes off the clock. Their first drive and leads 7 nothing as we head to the second here on WOSF. Tonight's second quarter brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer, serving Lima for over 100 years and proud to call this home. Second and eight for Marion Local. Here, still on their first drive as well, the second quarter gets underway. Laws, the deep man in the I formation. Knopf under center. Turns and hands to Laws. Pushes his offensive lineman forward. Cut down shy of the 25-yard line. It's Marion Local on the... Suburbs of the Betty's Natural Food Red Zone. At yeah, that time, they pulled the left guard, left tackle, and tried to run right. Their sales did a good job of flowing to the football. Hold the, hold the game to three. Third and six for Marion Local. Inconceivably, four down territory. Running backs to each side of Knopf and a gun. He'll send Laws in motion and keep it himself. Knopf. Has the structure first down on the keeper. And they are now well inside the Betty's Natural Foods red zone. Really good block that time by Luke Webker. Got a big hit, freed him up for that first down. First and 10 with the ball spotted at the 17-yard line. Again, still Marion Local's first drive. Tenth play of the drive upcoming. You're not going to get many possessions tonight, Garrett, the way these two offenses no. are playing. 
We approach the 11 minute mark on the home and insurance scoreboard here in this first half. Knopf looks for Pullman, fires, throw it up and over him on the incompletion. A little bit of miscommunication, I think, yeah. on the pattern. Pullman wasn't running hard to the corner. He kind of thought maybe the ball was coming to him at a, a spot near the 10-yard line, and the ball was overthrown. Yeah, Pullman ran more of an out while Knopf threw more of a fade. That'll bring up second and 10. But it does stop that clock. Here comes Holscher into the game. When Holscher comes into the game, bring in the play from the sideline. But don't like, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't like it if I was wearing orange and black. Holscher... A, Size misadvantage as well. Matched up with A.J. Griesdorn out here. That one. They'll hand up the middle of the camp on the trap. Gained just a couple. Zach Cordonier with the tackle. So third and seven. Upcoming here for Marion Local. Trailing 7-0 on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. Ten thirty remaining here in this second quarter. See what the Flyers dial up here. Laws, the wing, to the left of the formation. And we'll get a timeout called. So we'll step aside as well. 10.20 to go here in this second quarter. The break in the action and a break on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Layfeld Industrial Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and in Greenville. Third and seven from the 15-yard line. A couple of different ways Marion Local can approach this, Mark. Uh, conceivably, they got two plays to pick up seven yards, so we'll see how they play it because it would be real easy to just turn around and hand it off and get what you can and set up for it now. Well, hey, Garrett, I think this shows the importance of this drive for Coach Goodwin. He yes. took a time out there with 10.20 to go because he wants this ball in the end zone, and he wants to make sure everybody's on the same page right here. Flyers break the huddle. Laws will join Knopf in the backfield. Holscher lined up at the slot to the right of the formation. Ball to 15-yard line. Flyers with their 13th play to drive. Blitz coming. Knopf. Gets out of the grasp of a Versailles tackler and will scamper in for a Busher electric touchdown. Justin Knopf from 15 yards out was nearly in the grasp of a Tiger. Instead, scampers for a TD, and they're an extra point away from tying it up. Well, what happened was a blitz came, and the, the, the defensive backs did their job, but he was able to elude the blitz, and then with the defensive backs back to him, he was able to scamper into the end zone break a tackle along the way, and like you said, we're a, e a PAT away from having this one even. Third rushing touchdown of the season for Justin Knopf. As Carson Bills comes on for the extra point for the blue and gold. The snap is back to hold is down, the kick is up, and is through the uprights and good to tie it up at seven on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. So we'll step aside. After the Busher Electric touchdown, Flyers and Tigers all knotted up at seven here on WOSA. Tonight's touchdown sponsor, Busher Electric. Very full service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. Long touchdown drives for both squads to start tonight's ball game, Mark. 15 plays for Versailles, 12 for Marion Local, 82 yards for Versailles, 80 for Marion Local. Let's see if Versailles can hold serve. We often talk about if you can force your opponent to go 80 yards in high school football, <laughs> it generally doesn't lead to scoring opportunities. And we've seen the opposite of that here through the first quarter in two minutes. Uh, especially because these two teams have been so defensively oriented this year and their defensive statistics have been pretty obvious. And, yeah, to take the football that way for both teams. Uh, we'll see if somebody straightens up their defense here or the offense continues to roll. A kickoff, end over end. Caught by the Tigers. Brought out past the 20-yard line. Just shy of the 25-yard line by Lane Bergman. Talk about some collisions. Laws got doubled up on the far side of the field. And he and a couple of Tigers just collided with each other. Falls at the 23-yard line. First touchdown by Versailles. 
an impressive one. Marion Local's only given up 14 points in the first half coming into tonight. And we're outscoring their opponents 77 to 7 in the first quarter before this week six matchup. Well, and the Tigers have pitched, what, three shutouts three and shutouts two sevens for the season. Nothing Marion happened. local defense gobbles up Joel Garrett on a carry. I think that was. Uh, it was Henry. Uh, I think it was 42 Schmidtmeyer. So gets, gets was, the carry. Oh, you're correct. My, my bad. Schmidtmeyer was the blocker in there. Well, and Versailles has a couple of guys that James Schmidtmeyer, 5'10, 190 fullback. Blake Henry's a 6'1, 190 uh, sub at the backfield. That They've got some size there in that backfield as Osborne will look to throw on second and long. Flushed from the pocket. Can't get past Drew Laws, but got out to the 30 yard line. And it'll be third and pretty short here for the Tigers. Wise decision. Look downfield, nothing open. Saw an opening to pick up some yardage on the right side of the formation. And Picked up seven. Third down. Clock continues to tick on the Holman Insurance scoreboard as we approach nine minutes to go here in this first half. Both offense and defense looking to the sideline for the call. And it's a big third down if Marion Oak can get mm. off the field. You don't want to let Versailles start that drive like they did the last time. Meanwhile, Versailles. Wants to put together another 15-play drive as Marion Local shows blitz initially. Here they come. And they do come. Yep. Osborne's got a hole wow. to run through, and he's out past the 35-yard line to the 37. It's enough for a structure first down. They picked it up. They got him deep in the backfield. They were able to pick it up. And as you said, the Garrett was able to find that crease right there and take it to the 38. Another first down. 8.30 to go in this first half. First and 10 from the 38-yard line. Got Henry in the backfield now. Osborne tried to get Marion Local to jump. Instead, we'll turn and look to the sideline. Faked me out even. I wondered how much time was left on the play clock as it hits five now. Fakes the handoff, keeps it himself before he's met in a hole and shoved backwards. A whole host of flyers there reading that perfectly. It looked like Ethan Heitkamp got the tackle for the blue and gold. Give him a yard to the 39. That left side of the defensive formation, including Isaac Mullenkamp and Luke Webker over there. Also number 36 was a part of that too. That's Simon Partington. Partington, a 5'10", 200 pound senior. Playing that nose tackle spot. Has to play both gaps. There in the center of that defense on the defensive line. As Osborne will look to throw for the first time on the drive. The pass is incomplete. Was looking for Griesdorn, I believe. No, it was Bergman. Yeah, Bergman, yeah. The intended target. Had it for a second, but was broken up at the last minute by a flyer defender. Well, one of the mistakes some quarterbacks make is to throw the football over the middle late and soft. And that was something Osborne was not going to do. He had some steam on that one. And receiver Bergman wasn't able to haul it in. So 39. Four of her sales, 7.20 to go. Looking for that structure, first down. Blitz coming, and wow. get a timeout by her sales. So we'll step aside, 7.19 to go here in this second quarter. Third and nine when we return on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard brought to you by Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. We talked about how Coach Goodman wanted that touchdown the last time. This is Coach Jones saying we need a first down. Yeah. Calling timeout to get everybody on the same page and make sure we know we're going to run here. Trips left. 15 plays the first drive, trying to extend it one more time. Osborne looking left, takes a shot. It's caught by Griesdorn for the structure first down and more. He's form tackled at the 46-yard line, but it'll move the chains on the pitch and catch from seniors. 15-yard pickup on a little in route. 
And the ball was delivered right on time. I, I, people need to keep reminding me that last year Osborne was a wideout because his composure and his ability to throw the football uh, he has had having a really nice year, and, and tonight's played very well. Last year, going into, I think, the Coldwater game, he had four rushing touchdowns, four receiving touchdowns, yeah. and four passing touchdowns, where their starting quarterback was six foot eight, and they just line him up outside and throw it to him. So he did it all last year. Schmidtmeyer, the carry, broke through the initial line of the Marion local defense before he's cut down at the 41 yard line. So he gained a couple there. On first and 10. For the Tigers, who continue to extend this drive. The big guys up front, 55 for Donier, 57 Bargy, 66 Waymeyer, 72 Starkey, 77 Dominic Meyer, the tight end Luke Kaiser wears 81. And they are moving some people around. Second and six, Osborne flush from the pocket. Throws, has a wide open receiver who's Hits the turf, Bergman has another big catch. Had the touchdown catch his first of the season in the first quarter and will move the chains on that pitch and catch. He's able to roll out and get away from Mitchell Randley and make the, the completion for the first down. Ball went to what, the 23? That makes it a 19 yard pickup. Another four minutes taken off the clock here by Versailles on this drive on the home and insurance scoreboard as we're past the halfway point here in the second quarter. You can see they all looked at the sideline to get the play call, and they are in absolutely no hurry. This yep. is a part of the plan. Uh, run that play clock down to 4-5. It's at 6 right now. And they're just now getting set. Snapped with 2. Hand off to Henry. Stalemated, but muscles through a defender. Before he hits the turf. They pulled number 55, Cordonia again. That was 51. So second and eight upcoming here as the Flyers have traded linebackers a couple of different times. They brought Adam Winter in for Drew Laws. They'll exchange them every once in a while here as this drive continues. Tenth play of the drive upcoming. Osborne, the play action pass, and it's nearly brought down, got rid of it. Flyer faithful, yeah. won an intentional grounding. We're going to get a little conference. Was there a receiver there, in there the is, area? The, the, the way it's go. officiated yep. is there are two officials looking for different things. So by definition, they've got to talk about it. Yep. And people don't like that because they think that it's instant. But the official on the sideline has to be looking for a, a receiver in the area. The head official is looking at something different. They've got to confer. And it was intentional grounding, to be frank. And not only that, it's a loss of down situation, too. So that further compounds the situation. And that penalty is marked off from the 32-yard line. Right. And so that, that's one of the other things is that, you know, they've got to get it from the spot. And so you've got to make sure you got all your ducks in a row. So uh, not, a, not one of those fun penalties that ever happens. Now, the scoreboard still says second down. Shouldn't yep. it be third? The down marker says second down. And yeah, now I think we're going to get time out and discuss this. Should be third down. Lost it down, correct? Yes. And that's what our officials are going to discuss right here. So when it is third down, it'll be third and 23. Yep, there we go. Really good piece of officiating. Helped on by the blue and gold fans that we're yes. seated here. <laughs> They just want to make sure you got a nice, fair, yeah. even game, integrity. The, the football needs to get to the 13 yard. They need 24 yards. Osborne tried to get Marion Local to jump. They'll now step up towards the line of scrimmage. See if they come with a blitz or if they'll drop them. Looks like they might be dropping laws coming off the edge. Osborne has time to fire. It's caught up the middle by Bergman to the 20 yard line. Needed to get to the 13. But a big gain there of 17 yards sure helps make fourth down a little bit more manageable. Yeah, he was in the slot. He made a cut to the middle of the field. Pass was on time and allowed him to catch and run. Joel Garrett's going to come yep. on for a field goal. Field attempt. goal time, but they're going to have to line it up at about, what, the 26 or 7? Going to be spotted right at the 27-yard line. So a 37-yard field goal upcoming from Joel Garrett, looking to make it 10-7. Osborne will hold. 
The snap is back. The kick is down. The ball is down. The kick is up. The kick Ooh. hits the uprights and is no good. Garrett had the distance on it, but doinked it. And really even to have a chance at a 37-yard field goal is a heck of an effort. Well, here's the other thing about that. Look how high up on the upright it hit. Right. Uh, that ball was going to go a long, long way. I mean, that was a 37-yard field goal. That would have been good had he you know, got it over a little bit from a much farther distance. But the Flyers hold and will take over with 4.05 to go. Which is just a little more than Marion Local took off the clock on their first drive. So the ball spotted at the 20-yard line. Each team has two timeouts remaining, Garrett. 4.05 to go on the Holman Insurance scoreboard. Knopf will go back to work in a gun. Hands off the laws, looking to run right. Does. Nice Great tackle. open field tackle yes. made by Colton Groff. Because if he doesn't make that tackle, Laws might pick up a first down and more. He got just a yard that time, and you are correct. If he gets through that tackle, he's up the sideline for a lot of yardage. A lot of real estate in front of him. See what the urgency is here for the Flyers. They get the football to start the second half. See if it's just a keep away or they try to put the pedal down here. You know they would like to put seven up here and right. get the ball back to start half number two. Laws will line up as the wing. Knopf in a pistol. Height camp behind him. Fake the handoff. He'll look to throw over the middle. It's caught by Holscher for the structure first down. Tag team to the turf by a pair of Tigers. But it moves the chains on another Vic Holscher completion. Pair of juniors, Holscher with the reception, off with the pass. You can tell those guys have spent a lot of time working together. So first and 10 with the football at the 37-yard line. Coming up on three minutes to go here in this second quarter. Two running backs in the backfield with Knopf. One wide receiver split out wide to each side as Laws goes in motion. Knopf keeps it himself. Goes up the middle of that Versailles D. Busts out. Got very close to a structure first down. They're going to mark him just shy of that orange marker. And it'll bring up second and one. Got a good lead block from Ethan Heitkamp to lead him through the hole that time. Flyers turning it on here. 2.30 upcoming on that home and insured scoreboard. Holscher brings the play in from the sideline. Two and a half minutes to go, and you're looking at second and one. I was just going to yeah. second and one gives you a lot of options to work with. As Holscher will line up He's as a wide up with receiver. AJ Greestorn again over here. Here on the bottom of your screen. They'll Deep look pattern. for him, yep. looking for him, and just overthrew it. Ball bounced to the 30 yard line as Knopf took the snap, gave the one step, and let it fly. And yet, Really like your chances, frankly, when Vic Holscher being the guy out there trying to go chase the football. Yeah, A.J. Griesdorm running with him, but just a shade behind him. If that ball was a bit more accurately thrown, as they've done so many times this year, that might have been six. So third and one now. Another pair of running backs in the backfield as Heitkamp will power through the Versailles D for the structure first down, just shy of that midfield strike. Pickup of three when you needed one. Now the clock does become somewhat of a factor as we're just two minutes left. It took out a couple of running backs, brought in a couple of wide receivers with two minutes to go here on the home and insurance scoreboard. Knopf in the gun. The junior signal caller sends a man in motion. He'll stand in the pocket, fire over the middle of the field, looking for Pullman. Got his fingertips on it. Nice defense. It was. It was number, was that 29, I was going to say, it's a long way to look. <laughs> Ross Francis, who has a pair of interceptions on the season, and he was running stride for stride with the receiver. Francis, a 5'9", 180-pound junior. So they like, with those two picks, they like using him in coverage. Stop the clock, too. The incomplete pass makes it second and ten. A trio of receivers to the right of Knopf. It's the Tigers show blitz. They'll just bring four. Snoff steps up in the pocket, and now will scamper. Slips one tackler, got to the 46-yard line, so gain of about five, and now Marion Local will use another timeout with just over 90 seconds to go here in this first half. Schmittmeyer got enough on him to slow him down. 
So it'll be third and about a little more than six. Upcoming here for Marion Local. Again, we talked about they get the ball to start the second half. But I think you're right that Tim Goodwin would love to yeah. put some more points on the board and have the opportunity to make it a two-score lead to start the second half you rather know, than As I'm looking time. around here, Garrett, if you were going to be a little late to the game, you might as well like park in Minster and Uber over or yeah, something. No, you're not parking anywhere near Maria Stein tonight. Yeah, when the uh, when the grain bin parking is all beaten up, <laughs> uh, yeah. you got to park in Chickasaw and walk down 716 to get here. It's... Uh, it is a packed house here, as you would expect. The number one team in Division 6 for sales, the number one team in Division 7. Marion Local tangoing tonight. Marion Local, winners of 37 straight games. Meanwhile, for sales, looking to break a losing streak to the Flyers that goes back to this exact day, back in 2012. So third and seven upcoming. Be the eighth play of the drive for Marion Local. Drive that started at their own 20-yard line after the missed field goal by Joel Garrett. 135 to go here in this first half. As Knopfel standing the gun with two receivers to each side. Patiently awaits the snap from Colton Arns. It's high. He'll keep it himself. Has to get to the 40-yard line. Got right there. So on a designed quarterback run. They move the chains at the structure first down. Ross Francis was there at the 40-yard line, but he was able to power through that on the 13-yard pickup and get a first down to the 39. Clock continues to tick. Two wide receivers to the left and right. Doff looking left, throws over the middle. Caught by Griffin Bruns, tries to juke a tackler. Mm -hmm. Is cut down at the 35-yard line, and Marion Local will use their final timeout here. Or yeah, that should be their last timeout. Yeah, Griffin was trying to get out of bounds, but a good tackle. He was able to pick up just the three yards to the 36 and keep him in bounds. We'll step aside with 106 to go. Come back, have more second quarter action for you upcoming on WOSN. Tonight's second quarter brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer, serving Lima for over 100 years. They're proud to call this home. Just over 60 seconds to go here in this first half. All dotted up at seven between Marion Local and Versailles on the home and insurance scoreboard. Second and seven and a half upcoming here for the Marion Local Flyers, who will get the football back to start the third quarter. And they have just taken huge series for both teams. Of course, I think every series might be big tonight, yeah. Garrett. No, you got to yep. capitalize yep. on each possession as Knopf will stand by himself. In the shotgun. Bringing bunch. As Versailles brings the pressure. It's lofted up, tipped, and Whoa. intercepted by Griesdorn. Just the fourth interception of the season thrown by Justin Knopf. Got tipped up high in the air. Picked off by Griesdorn. His first of the year. Bounced off a couple of bodies. Griesdorn playing safety back there, reeled it in. His team holds on. And now let's see what they do with 57 seconds left and a couple of timeouts. Got a long a bunch of real estate here. You wouldn't want to take a big chance against the Flyers, but the quarterback has been hot, too. Under a minute to go here in this first half. We got a friend here. Uh, yeah, here. Praying Mantis. Praying Mantis. Yeah, hey. Joined us in the booth I'm tonight. I'm sure he doesn't want to be with us. <laughs> he just was. <laughs> you made sure he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. He's gone. He's uh, out doing his job eating bugs or whatever those things do. Looks like the Under Tigers going to. Yeah. Take just the knee yep. and look to run out the clock here in this first half. You're right, backed up at your own 10 yard line. You got a great defense in Marion Local. You live to fight another day, well, I think. You have fought yourself to a 7 7 tie. Just don't do anything foolish right here that might change that. So the Tigers will have to snap it at least one more time. But that's a big time play from that Versailles D on the interception from A.J. Griesdorn. As Marion Local, it was the 10th play of the drive when they threw that interception. I'll snap it one more time, and we'll go to the halftime break. Versailles, seven. Marion Local, seven. 
We'll step aside, come back with third quarter action for you here in this fantastic Division VI versus Division VII Midwest Athletic Conference matchup here on WOSF. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Betty's Natural Foods. Your partner for better health. Visit Betty'sNaturalFoods.com to learn more. Mark, we take a look at some first half stats. What stands out to you? Well, the uh, Mary Local Flyers ran 22 plays. They have 120 yards. They are three of seven. Well, actually three of seven with one interception. And they rushed the ball the other 11 plays. So they, they've not really, you know, been very diversified mm -hmm. like we, we typically think of. But they have 120 yards for sales. They have 139 yards on 27 plays. Michael Osborne is six of nine, throwing the football without interception. In fact, Marcellus did not turn the football over. And obviously, they rushed the ball 18 times in the football game. So pretty much what we thought, close. I'm surprised we only had two possessions, really, for each team. Obviously, Marcellus had a third one where they kneeled down twice. But um, two possessions for each team and not much going on other than, in fact, ball control. Yeah, no, and, we, and, you know, we've traded touchdowns. We've traded... I don't even know if they're miscues that you get a missed field goal, a 37-yarder that right. hits the upright, and then a tipped ball that goes for an interception with under a minute to go. It's not even that they've traded miscues. It's just those are going to, I think, we'll potentially look back on the way those last two drives ended in the first half and say, if only, if only for one squad. Of course, we're always anxious to see what type of adjustments are made at halftime, and this will be Marine Local football first here in quarter number three. and. Kick off by uh, Leland Boland, and let's see how this uh, plays out here in uh, half number two with a pair of 5-0 and o teams ranked number one in their division. He's got the football teed up, and Boland will send it away. It's a short kick. Went a little longer than I thought to the five-yard line. Vic Holscher, the return. Holscher, special team star last week, brings it out to just shy of the 50-yard line. And Marion Loka will have fantastic field position on their first drive here in the second half. He is such a dangerous weapon, obviously, as a receiver right there. We saw him run the football back. We saw him run two punts back last week against New Bremen that would have, could have, should have been touchdowns, knocked out at the four-yard line, then knocked out later on at the 13-yard line, setting up scores. And he puts his team in really good position to start half number two. Knopfel step back into the shotgun on first and ten. Holster will man in motion. Popped it to him, looking for some room, cuts up, and it is dropped to the turf. Well, Caleb Pettigene got in there first and disrupted the play and knocked him into a teammate, and he lost a couple back to the 45. Andrew Lyons in on the stop as well. So the Flyers lose a pair of yards. Well, they were going to get the ball in their playmaker's hands, weren't they? Yeah, you get the kick off to Vic Holscher yep. and then say, we're going to make sure the first play of the half. And Holscher saw that there wasn't going to be any room on that outside, so tried to cut it up the middle, but the Versailles D was there. Two backfield, two running backs in the backfield as Laws goes in motion to the far side. Knopf keeps it himself, meandering oh through that to Versailles D, crosses midfield and cut down just shy of the 45-yard line. When he runs that, Ethan Heitkamp is a lead blocker, and he just nailed somebody that time and made it a very makeable third down here. Nice chunk play. Makes it third and a long three. Knopf oh, had a really nice game running the football, but when you get blocks like that, that's what really makes things easier. Here's Partington. I was just going to say, him. Simon Partington comes into full at the fullback spot. Laws the man in motion. He'll turn around and hand it off to Heitkamp. He's got the structure first down before he's stood up, literally picked up off the ground and dropped. <laughs> Michael Osborne, one of the Tigers, in on the stop as was Ross Francis, but it moves the change for another structure first down. Yeah, what do you call that, Garrett? Big boy football? Yes, sir. Man on man, plus you bring in Partington at 5, at 10, 200 pounds to help clear raid, and uh, obviously the big back then picks up a first down. Tonight's first down sponsor, Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Knopf will roll to the near side, lets it fly early, caught by Pullman at the 30-yard line, spun out of bounds at the 25 but it's another structure first down for the Flyers on an efficient first drive of the half. Yeah, that was. That was a, a saving tackle that time by Griesdorner. He perhaps gets to the end zone. 15-yard pickup and another first down. So right on the outskirts of the Betty's Natural Food Red Zone are the Flyers. Just over 
just under two minutes gone here in this third quarter. Knopf will have Hike Camp to his right and the gun with three receivers to his left. He'll roll to the near side, keep it himself. Hike Camp and a big collision there between Knopf and Levi Bargy, leading tackler for Versailles. Got punished for making that tackle. Yeah, Levi's had 45 tackles in their first uh, five football games. Got one right there. Had to pay the price to do so. Yes, he did. Probably not used to seeing a quarterback coming through looking to deliver a blow. Usually they're looking to get out of the way, but Knopf puts the head down. Listed at 175, but he plays bigger than that. Two wide receivers to the left. Knopf running the option, keeps it himself inside the 10-yard line before he spiked to the turf. <laughs> Tackle made by Bargy again, but they're deep inside that Betty's natural food red zone. Really heads up play that time rather than take a chance with the pitch. Keeps the football himself and gets a first down at the nine. So another structure first down makes it first and goal. Marion local driving on this opening drive of this third quarter. They'll go back to the I formation as Partington will line up at the fullback spot with Hike Camp behind him. Law's in motion. They hand off to Hike Camp. He's brought down as he runs into a big pile of Tigers. Running behind the blocks of Partington, plus the left tackle on that side. Uh, left guard on that side, Luke Booty. Luke Webker picked up four. Now they'll back it down high formation. They want to unbalance, but Grant Ungren over there too. High camp into the end zone from five yards out. His eighth rushing touchdown of the season. It gives Marion Local the first lead of the evening on to push her electric touchdown. Four consecutive runs yeah. to cap off that eight-play drive. Well, actually, out of those eight plays, just one of them was a completed pass. That one that they threw to Andrew Pullman. The rest was all on the ground. A lot of it by the quarterback, Knopf. But right there, Heitkamp gets into the end zone. The 8-21 mark of the third quarter. That Busher electric touchdown gives the Flyers the lead. As Carson Bills on for the extra point. Good snap. Kick through the uprights and good. Makes it 14-7 Flyers at the 8-21 mark of the third quarter here on WOSN. Tonight's third quarter brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer. Serving Lima for over 100 years, we are proud to call this home. Eight plays, 53 yards, 339 off the clock, set up by the good kickoff return by Holscher and then some good power football. And, and Garrett, we talked a little bit at the break. It's, it's difficult to say with 821 to go in the third, this is a big possession. This is a big possession for the Versailles offense right here. They, they moved the football well in the first half, and they're going to have to do so again here. Yeah, but, in, but both sides offensively. And defensively, they've been bend but don't break, where if you if you can make somebody go 15 plays in 83 yards, you know what? <laughs> they've earned that <laughs> yeah, touchdown. Um, and to Marion Local's credit, they go 12 plays and 80 yards for their first touchdown drive, but uh, got the short field on the Holscher return. And now you're right. I think it's an important possession here for the Versailles Tigers, whose Bills has the football teed up and sends it away. Offside. And yep. we get a penalty flag on the Flyers. Somebody on this side of the formation was early. It's been a well-officiated game here. It has. <laughs> and when a penalty happens and the coach is mad at the players, not the officials, you know that yeah. they got that one right. Coach Goodwin discussing life. His special teams play has been so good this year and just a little bit of a five-yard error right there. And Conceivably, you know, Versailles happy about that. that Michael Osborne and Lane Bergman, and they've and Marion Local, to their credit, has made sure we're not kicking it to number 17. Yeah. See if they try to get it to Bergman. Bergman lining up to the far sideline right now, and I'm, I would bet you decent money that there was an edict 
mm -hmm. to Carson Bills of make sure you see where 17 was and we're not kicking it to that side. You know you're dangerous when you're a quarterback and that's your run back, you know, kicks yeah. and punts. Bills boots it away. Oh, good kick. And he's got it to Bergman. Wow. And that what ball kick. goes into the end zone. And will be a touchback. So a great boot from Carson Bills. Yeah. Makes for sales. He's going to go to grab one of his teammates to say, hey, thank you for jumping off sides because <laughs> that would be allowing me to add five more yards to my kicking off, kickoff average. 8.21 to go here in this third quarter. For sales, will go back to work offensively. They were efficient the first half, moving the football. Let's see what uh, Coach Jones has come up with at halftime for their adjustments. Trailing 14-7 on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. Osborne in the gun. Hands off to Garrett. He's got a little bit of a hole. Down out to the 23-yard line. For sales, looking for their first win over Marion Local since 2012. This day exactly 11 years ago. Not that the world's changed or anything and <laughs> since that time. Nothing's different. You know, the interesting thing I, I found out looking at, that was a 24-14 game. Versailles has been in the league 19 years. They've only won one league championship in 19 years. Of course, we've all talked about Garrett. It is easier to win a state championship well, than it is to I win was a gonna say, championship. Well, I was going to say, Versailles in 2012 yep. went 5-5 five and five and beat Marion Local. Yep. Marion Local won a state championship. Osborne and a gun. Oh, good ball fake. Gets through one tackler. Gets out of the open field, has the structure first down before he's brought to the turf at the 35-yard line, but not before he moves the chains. He did not half-heart that ball fake. He made that look like he was going to pitch out and instead got 11 yards on the pickup himself. Really nice play that time by the quarterback, Osborne. So that brings up first and 10 with the ball right at the 35-yard line. 371 yards rushing and six touchdowns before this evening's game. He'll be joined in the backfield by Garrett. Two wide receivers to his right, as well as a wing. So the Flyers look to change up their coverage. Laws will line up at the end. And Marion Local will drop defenders. Garrett, the carry. Gain of just one for a whole host. You, you Flyers can see Partington kind of shifting position. He rolled from Gave his the old left barrel to the right. Roll. Yeah, to get where he wanted to be defensively. Perhaps got two, perhaps, but it's a little short yeah, of that. Yeah, even two is stretching it, maybe. Yes, it is. I just looked at the down box on the far side, and I might have gave him two that time. Approaching the midway point of this third quarter, second and eight. Tigers with 10 on the play clock. Blitz. Osborne was looking for a screen. The running back got tackled. He's able to... Get something out of it to the 40-yard line as Joel Garrett was looking to get the ball leaked to him and just got brought to the turf by Landon Arling. And the fourth consecutive run will bring up third and a long five for the Flyers. Well, uh, Garrett, of course, our broadcast position here is on the Marion local side, and their people understand the importance of getting a stop at this third and a lengthy five. Even if it's just to get the football back with as much time as possible because Versailles has done a great job taking time off the clock on that home and insurance scoreboard. Third and five. They'll send Bergman in motion. Osborne will keep it himself. Nearly no, corralled and didn't get anywhere close to the first down marker. Flyer coaches are saying they've got the football. I think Ungren blew in there and blew that play up. Osborne certainly doesn't have the football. He's kneeling. So we got Everybody untangled. No signal other than that the ball spotted at the 40-yard line. Well, coach rolled his dice early in the football game. This time it looks like he's going to punt. This will be the first punt of the football game. So under five minutes to go. Leland Bolin will punt it away. Vic Holscher and Griffin Bronze back deep. Bruns took a t look out. Quarterback's in Osborne. As the up back. Yes, he is. And I get a delay a game. Either a delay a game or a timeout. It is a delay a game. Delay game, yeah. 
Last week, Bruns took a punt return back to the house for a touchdown that was called back. Vic Holscher brought several back inside the 10-yard line. So Boland looks to send it away, and now Osborne will line up as a gunner on the, out, on the top of the screen. Boland sends Good it away. Punt. End over end kick caught by Holscher at the 29-yard line. Dances before Osborne yeah. brings him down. Open field tackle by Michael Osborne on the first punt for either side. So Marion Local sales. takes over at the, at the 30 yard line. 30 yard line. For sales had the football for four minutes, but Marion Local held. We'll get the ball at their own 31-yard line. We mentioned it was a big possession for the Versailles mm -hmm. offense on that one. Big possession here uh, for the Versailles defense as uh, well. Agreed. The way this game is evaporating time-wise, you get down two scores here, and that could cause some problems. Off in a gun. First and 10. Holscher in motion. Fake the handoff to him. He'll look to throw. Knopf stands in the pocket. Fires over the middle of the field. It's the first catch of the season by Oliver Hillsman, and it goes for a structure first down. A 6'2", 180-pound sophomore. Lined up on the left side of the formation, dragged all the way across the field for the pitch and catch his first of the year. That means there are now 12 different Marion local flyers who have caught passes this year, and we're in week six. Not traditionally known for airing it out, but he, he spreads it out and, and obviously yeah. does a good job of finding open receivers like that one on the drag pattern. Dolph will go under center this time. High camp, the fullback. Law's the running back. He gets the carry. Muscles to the 48 yard line. So gain of five for the junior. And really, the three running backs at Marion Local plays with Parker Hess, Drew Laws, and Ethan Heitkamp, all three juniors. They'll bring in Simon Partington at the fullback spot. So they got five guys when you count mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Otte, who's out with the injury, that can really run the football. Heitkamp has eight touchdowns on the season. It might be their fourth best running back. As Laws goes in motion. Knopf will keep it himself. Cut down just shy of that first down marker. The biggest of the bats when it comes to running the football is Laws. He goes 190. And has he's got great agility, is stays on his feet, patient when he runs, and a ring up third and short after the carry by Knopf. There's Partington back in the backfield again to be the road grader. High camp will dot the eye on third and two. Gets the carry. Got just to the stick. And they'll give him the structure first down. So the clock continues to tick here in this third quarter. Two and a half minutes to go on the home and insurance scoreboard. Colton Arns plays center. And you got Adam Winter, Isaac Mullenkamp, Luke Webker, Kyle Ungren, Luke Booty. These guys are doing their job up front. Add that tight end in there you mentioned a while ago, Oliver Hulsman. Knopf in a gun, awaits the snap from Arns. Looks right, lets it fly. Looking for Pullman down the sideline, oh, nearly boy. intercepted. That was a well-thrown ball and well-defended. Is that Griesdorn yeah, again? Yeah, A.J. Griesdorn. He went down awkwardly. Let's see if he gets up. I guess he's going to be okay. He well, leaped up and spiked that one away. Nearly a fantastic yeah. grab. And that ball was just a, a yard or so short of being six points. Tonight's instant replay sponsor, Layfeld Industrial and Welding Supplies, with locations in Coldwater and in Greenville. Second and ten. It's a good chance to take a shot at the end zone uh, at that yeah, time. Just to yeah. let it fly and nearly put it in the perfect spot, but well defended by Griesdorn. Knopf rolling to the near side, lets it fly, caught by Bruns. He's immediately hit at the 40-yard line. It's a gain of five as the tackle made by Lane Berkman. Facing a third and three, maybe four, I guess, closer to that. This coach make this four down territory. They're quick to the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers out wide. Laws, the wing. Height camp, the running back. Get a timeout. 
They were going to run something to the short side of the field. The coach called timeout. So with 1.31 to go here in the third quarter, we'll step aside. More third quarter action coming up here on WOSN. Tonight's Marion local premier sponsor, OPAC and Osgood, for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. Call OPAC. I formation. He'll turn around and hand it off to Heitkamp. He's got a hole. Had to get to the 36-yard line. Just yard and short. They're going to mark him just shy and bring up fourth down. So another big fourth down play upcoming. As Knopf will run the play in. Approaching one minute to go here in this third quarter, Marion Local leads 14-7. I'll go under center in the I formation one more time. Just hand it off to Heitkamp. And I don't know what he got oh, there. He did not. Got shoved backwards. And that is a gigantic play from that Versailles defense. Blake Henry, one of the Tigers in on the stop, as was Ross Francis. Marion Local just tried to shove their way forward for the first down. Didn't get it. It's a big turnover on downs by Versailles defense. Dominic Bargy was on the bottom of that pile, too. They actually gave him a no gain on the play. And good job, Versailles holds. Each team now has got to stop here in quarter number three. And we traded touchdowns, traded scores, uh, drives that didn't end in scores with a missed field goal and an interception. Now we've traded turnover on downs and punts. Pretty good field position to start, too, on your own 37. Best starting field position of the night for Versailles. As Osborne will keep it himself, oh. and he is upended. Partington. Simon Partington coming in from that nose tackle spot. Got his shoulder right into the hip of Michael Osborne and sent him airborne. They so, pulled a couple guys from the right side of the formation, but Partington got through the gap and made the tackle. Partington, a 5'10", 200-pound senior. Shot the gap, made the tackle. It's a loss of about a yard. Makes it second and 11. Potentially the final play of the quarter upcoming. Osborne, the senior signal caller. Pressured immediately, flushed from the pocket, rolling to his right. Has to let it fly, does, it's tipped and intercepted. Marion Loco gets the pick. Osborne let it fly late. Got tipped, can't see who the flyer is that caught it. Landon Arling, I believe, got the football in the interception. Well, I know that number 18, Mitchell Randley, was putting pressure on, forced him out of the pocket, and we get our first turnover now for Versailles on the tip ball INT. So with eight seconds to go in the third quarter, Marion Local not only gets the football back, has phenomenal field position in positive territory at the 41-yard line. Pre-game, we talked about the importance of the big play, and that might be the big play that allows the Flyers to go up a couple of scores here. Steve Marion Local takes a shot here. Vic Holscher will line up as the inside receiver on the bottom of your screen. Knopf will just keep it himself off to the left side. Gets out the 37-yard line for the final play of the third quarter. We'll go to the fourth. Marion Local 14, Versailles 7 on the Home and Insurance School Board here on WOSN. This fourth quarter brought to you by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac, the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer. Serving Lima for over 100 years, they're proud to call this home. Second and seven upcoming for the Flyers. Three wide receivers out wide as Knopf awaits a snap. Has to step up in the pocket, got nearly him. brought down, and then is just stood up, and they'll whistle the play dead. Cordonier got him. Pushed him back just a couple of yards. So on the sack, brings up third and long, and it would be a big play for Versailles to get off the yes, field sir. here on third and 12. Absolutely. To hold after the interception and a really good field position for the Flyers. Marion Locals won 37 straight football games. Versailles has lost to Marion Local every time they've played since 2012. That's what's at stake here in this fourth quarter as Knopf looks to scramble. 
Nearly got pulled down by the jersey. Needs to get to the 30 and is brought down at the 29-yard line. Actually needed to get to the 31, I beg your pardon. Quarter and that is exactly where he got. He ran right through the blitz and he picked it up. Justin wow. Knopf has done a great job this year. Marion Local came into the season. They had questions. They, I don't know if we're making the right decision. He has played lights out through well, the first five and three-quarter games of the season. They, they were trying to decide last spring, should he be the quarterback or Adi? I think Coach made the wise decision. I think you're right. <laughs> as they'll hand off to Heitkamp, the up back in the I formation, but he's stalemated immediately. Gains nothing as the middle of that. Versailles Dean, Dominic Bargy, Dominic Meyer. Yeah, I think Schmidt-Meyer was in there too. Mary and Uncle will take out a couple of running backs, bring in a couple of wide receivers. On second and long. Here. The 31 yard line on the outskirts, knocking at the door of the Betty's Natural Food Rent Zone. Two receivers to each side, and off. Drops back, has time, fires over the middle of the field through the hands of Griffin Bruns. Pass was just a little hard and a bit behind him as he was coming across the formation, had a chance to make that catch and you know, obviously sprint for the sideline at a first down marker, but the pass was just a shade behind him. Here we are, third I was down. just going to say, it's third and long again where yep. Marion Local has picked up time and time again, has been able to extend drives. A couple of times they've used Knopf on the quarterback draw with blitz coming from Versailles. Let's see what the Tigers do defensively this time. They'll send three wide receivers to the right. Heitkamp looks to be the lead blocker. Yep, there it goes. And Knopf needs to get to the 21-yard line. He's going to be a bit short. He's just but. shy of that marker. But fourth down and one. Yeah, it looks like the Flyers will bring out the heavy package. Versailles did get a stop in this situation on the last drive. So right on the outskirts of that Betty's Natural Food Red Zone, looking to get in there, need one more yard. Timeout out. called yep. by Marion Local. Didn't like what they saw. And there were still 10 seconds on the play clock, but looks like maybe a formation miscue. So with 9.29 to go here in the fourth quarter, we'll step aside. Fourth and one upcoming on WOSN. Marion Local looking for a first down on fourth and one. Tonight's first down sponsor is Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Fourth and one. The last time Marion Local in a situation, they tried to push it up the gut with... Ethan Heitkamp didn't get it. They traditionally like to run the toss sweep and also aren't afraid to throw it on fourth and one either. Uh, and when they came out of that formation before coach called timeout, Heitkamp was the up back, Laws was behind him. Looks like they have a similar package in here right here. Number 42 in a ball game for Marion Local. Don't have a 42 on our roster. We'll line up. Fourth and one. Try to park for sales off oh, sides. Did, did they it? get him? No, but they turn oh, and pitch my. to Laws anyway. Laws. Wow. Did he get the first down? He got him to flinch. I have to measure this one, I'll bet. I don't think he got there. Looks like they're going to measure it. Would this be huge for Versailles to hold Absolutely. twice in this situation? And, and really, uh, it's just, it, it's it's a beautiful chess match by Tim Goodwin. They haven't gone on two all night, no yeah. fourth and one. Uh -huh. If they're going to jump for you, do it. So they went on two. And then if we still like our chances to turn and pitch to Laws, now we'll see whether this is a first down or not. They'll stretch those chains out. And he did not get there. Wow. So with 9.25 to go, Marion Local leads 14-7, but Versailles for the second consecutive drive forces a turnover on downs, and they'll get the football back with a chance to tie this game. Versailles has run five and punt. Then they had the uh, interception the last time on the second play of the drive. So not many uh, plays run here in half number two. Garrett, the deep man in the I formation, he gets the pitch. Running to his left. Breaks a tackle. 
Got out to the 30-yard line, a gain of eight on first down for Versailles. Toss sweep going to their left side of the formation. Good first down for them, pick up seven. I wonder how much the drive upcoming here is. Michael Osborne's played a lot of football tonight, and they've relied mm. on him, if, how much they can ride Joel Garrett here a little bit. One to take a little time, because this conceivably could be the final could, drive of the game exactly for Versailles. Right. They'll fake the handoff to Garrett. Osborne has time to throw over the middle of the field as a receiver just long was looking for Jace Watern. Had beaten his man, but Osborne left it just a little long on the end completion. Jace has had a good year for, yes, the, sir. for this team. He's uh, looking through my notes real quick here, how many touchdown catches he has. And I think he's got three of Osborne's you Thank you. six touchdown passes so far this year. Well, he seven was, now. He was open. He just uh, overthrew him a bit. Osborne does have a touchdown pass in the first quarter through a seven-yard strike to Lane Bergman. Ramley was after Osborne. He had to throw it. Third and three upcoming. Garrett, the deep man in the eye formation one more time. Takes the handoff, has some room to rumble. Gets out to the 40-yard line before he's brought down. Potential touchdown saving tackle made by Carter Jones. That's a structure first down for the Versailles Tigers. Joe Garrett is such a big running back. 5'10", 200 pounds, not a lot of body size as far as height to hit. Runs low to the ground, runs hard, and he's got that 200 pounds and good leg drive, and he got it. 11 that time to the 40 to first down. Been in and out of the lineup with that shoulder injury. You see the harness on the right shoulder. But he's trying to put the team on his back here in the fourth quarter. Osborne fakes the pitch, keeps it himself. Gaining just two on his first carry here on this drive. Hard to imagine, isn't it, Garrett? We're eight minutes to go in the game. Each team's had the football five times. I mean, if you count the Disregard the right, two, right, the two, right. two snaps plays. with yeah. under a minute to go at the end of the half, which you should, I think, you should yeah, count that exactly. against them. But yeah, no, you, and you've had to. It, it's almost like a basketball game where you got to capitalize on every yeah, possession yeah. that you have. It's Mac basketball played on grass here. Second and eight, Osborne with Garrett to his right fakes the pitch, gets through the first line of Marion local defenders, cut down just shy of the fifty yard line at the forty eight. Needs to get to the 50 for the structure. First down, it'll be third and short. Pulled Andrew Kaiser, 5'8", 190 pounds, and ran behind his block. Good pick up to the 48. Isaac Mullenkamp in the game for Marion Local, the linebacker spot. So third and a long two. I go back under center in the I formation. Fakes the handoff. Osborne scampers, needs to get to the 50, does, and that'll move the chains on the structure first down. Boy, I don't know, Garrett. Did they give him oh, the first down? Yeah, their spot looked like he was yeah. head Boy, and shoulders past the 50, short. but you're right, just short of the 50-yard <laughs> line. I'm ready to mark that first down on my stat page, and he is just a bit short. Well, been here a couple of times. You got to go for this one, don't you? Yeah, I, the coach says I'm going for it. They run Osborne three consecutive plays. What happens this time? Osborne tries to jump him off sides. Versailles has burned a timeout earlier. Schmidtmeyer moves to the right side, and they'll turn around, hand it to Garrett. Garrett's got oh. the first down on fourth and one. Just as they did in the first half, Versailles moves the chains on the ground. For another structure, first down. He picks up six behind that offensive line. Luke Kaiser, the tight end. Dominic Meyer, Caden Starkey, Daniel Waymeyer, Kaiser, Bargy, Cardania. And they are moving bodies around. Pick up that first down. It's just been power football yes, here on has. this drive for the Tigers. I formation one more time. Fakes the handoff, rolls right. Osborne. We'll put it in the air, looking deep. Nearly caught by Watern. All right, beg your pardon, Schmidtmeyer running deep. Incomplete as Osborne had to let it fly, otherwise it was going to be disaster time for the Orange and Black. But he threw it to a good spot. His teammate had a chance to go up and make a play for it. Just we're not able quite to snag it with the difficulty of the catch, but with under duress, that was a good throw. 
5.34 to go on a home and insurance scoreboard for sales. Trails Marion Local, 14-7. Marion Local already the season high of points scored against for sales. It only gave up 14 <laughs> points all year as Osborne's in a gun on second and 10. Rolling to his right. Brock down just shy of the 40-yard line. Gain of two. Brings up third and long. Ten's playing the drive. Garrett, and they may not get the football back. If, if they can't put seven on the board this time, the way the Flyers have been able to you know, run clock, not just now, but historically, this is going to be a huge uh, couple of downs right here. See how the Tigers play it. They run the football knowing that they're going forward on fourth down or trying to pick it up here. Three to Osborne's right. Schmidtmeyer stepping up the block. Trying the screen off the hands of Griesdorn. And it'll be fourth and long. Tried to get that jailbreak screen going that time, but just threw it a little bit high. It's and a good call with Marion Local coming with the blitz that yeah. if he can complete that pass. And Griesdorn just a shade over Griesdorn's reach, and here we are. Huge fourth down play. Not only will we talk about how Versailles plays it, does Marion Local bring the house one more time, or they drop back in coverage. We'll see here in mere moments. 4.52 to go on the Holman Insurance scoreboard. Uh, 10 11. seconds on the play clock. 11th player to drive, and they're going to have to take a timeout. Don't talk about it. We'll step aside as well. Fourth and eight upcoming for sales, trailing by seven. Pivotal play in this ballgame when we return on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and Versailles. 4.52 to go, 14-7, very local lead on the Holman's Insurance scoreboard. It's fourth and eight for the Tigers here. And I don't know that there's a way to overstate how well, big his play is. Exactly. Osborne's missed his last four passes. One of those was an INT. He's probably going to have to complete one right here. Fourth and eight, three wide receivers to the left of Osborne in the gun with Schmidtmeyer to his right. They'll send a man in motion to the near side to make it deuces to each side. They'll bring the house. Osborne able to get out of the sack, running to the near side. Is going to try to run for it. Needed to get to the 35. Did he get there? He's very close. He is. He really turned the wheels on. And he got really racked and got knocked out of bounds. Let's see what the spot is. He got a first down. He picked Garrett. up the structure first down on a scamper, nearly sacked in the pocket. Osborne got out of it to move the chains one more time. Tonight's first down sponsor, Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Needed to get to the 34. He got to the 32 and picked up a first down. Garrett now stands to the left of Osborne. He'll take the pitch. Tigers trying to set the edge. He's out in the open field to the 25-yard line before he's cut down. A nice first down yeah. pickup by Joel Garrett. Schmittmeyer had a good block on the edge to get him open right there. Under four and a half to go. Tigers going on another sustained drive. Upcoming play the 13th. This drive is more than five minutes old. Began back on her own 22-yard line. Man in motion. Bergman will hand off to Garrett. Met in the backfield. Slips out of the tackle. Breaks another one on a shoulder. They'll keep shoving ahead and get inside the Betty's natural food red zone. What tremendous leg strength that time by Garrett. He Hitting the backfield. The Turn that from the, a loss potentially into a structure first down. Of course, the other side of this, Garrett, this has taken them so long, they will, you know, their chances of not of having a second possession yeah. after this one, not good. They're going to have to score on this possession. Garrett steps back to the left of Osborne, steps back in the shotgun. He'll fake the pitch. Osborne keeps it himself. Still on his feet. Now the whistle finally blown dead. Just shy of the 15-yard line. Stumbled a little bit that time. I I wonder if he took that big shot over here by the sideline, uh, if his uh, 
Uh, leg strength is what same as it was earlier in the football game. And Versailles has done a nice job of relying on Joel Garrett here on this drive. 15th play of the drive upcoming. As the clock continues Who? to tick, three minutes on a Holman's Insurance scoreboard. Who has two 15-play drives against Mary Local in the same game? No, right. <laughs> nobody. Yes. Garrett to the right of Osborne. The pitch. He slipped and fell at the 20-yard line. Lost his yeah. footing. Good defensive pressure that time from Adam Winter. Tried, was turning it back in, and he slipped and fell. That's a four-yard loss. So third and long here for the Tigers. And the clock runs. Versailles has a single timeout remaining. Operating essentially is this this is the ball game. This, this is it. This is the only time yep. you're going to have the football. 15 seconds on the play clock. The so Tigers looking for their first win over Marion Local since 2012, this exact day 11 years ago. Osborne looks, fires, it's Got caught him. in the end zone. Or is it just shy of the end zone? It's a touchdown. A Busher electric touchdown on the catch. Zach Meyer. By Zach Meyer. Makes it 14-13. And Joel Garrett will come on for the extra point. 20-yard touchdown pass from Michael Osborne, his second of the night. His last four passes had been incomplete, and he put that one right on the money. Here's a big play. The snap back holds down. The kick is no good. Missed it. With 2.06 to go, the extra point goes wide. And Marion Local is holding on to a 14-13 lead with just over two minutes to go. You know, that young man has played his tail off and run the football and run the football and run the football. And he used so much leg strength, that time he just couldn't get go through the uprights. So an unfortunate turn of events for the Tigers. Makes it 14-13, Marion Local. Seven minutes and 19 seconds, and they went 16 plays. 78 yards. And here are the Flyers. Going to have to cover an onside kick. Of course, Marion Local got their own onside kick and the win over Wapak and the come-from-behind victory to open this season. Time to get the good hands people out there. Bowling not shy about what he's doing. He's yep. kicked the top of the football, and the third bounce will go straight up in the air. So Marion Locos got a lot of low numbers on the far sideline, including quarterback Justin Knopf. Bowling's got the football teed up at the 40-yard line, ready for the onside kick. There High goes. bounce, and it's caught by Griffin Bruns. Yep. So with 2.04 to go, Marion Local gets the football back. For sales just with one timeout. Ball did go 10 yards. Bruns was there. Now the Flyers just trying to run some clock. Special teams play for Marion Local. Ball did just what you thought, Garrett. Took that big high hop. Yeah. Bruns made the play on it. It's first and 10 from the 47. Knopf stands in the shotgun. Laws will go in motion. And Knopf will keep it himself. Looking to the right. Look has a hole and a structure first down. Yeah, you kind of wonder if the sails has a little bit of wind taken out of their sails at that, that time. And good blocking on the perimeter and down to the 39 yard line. Pick up of 14. So the clock continues to tick. Under two minutes to go on the home and insurance scoreboard. Knopf will be in the gun one more time. Send a man in motion. Same play, other side. He's got some blockers in front of him. Brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. Needs to get to the 29. Versailles will take the timeout with... 
under 90 seconds to go. We'll step aside as well, come back with more fourth quarter action for you here on WOSN. Tonight's Marion Local Premier sponsor is OPAC and Osgood for all your industrial painting, staining, and assembly needs. Call OPAC. Second and two upcoming out of the Versailles timeout. They have no more timeouts. Marion Local will now go on formation. Ethan Height camp the deep back. Gets the handoff. Runs right through the heart of that Versailles D for another structured first down. And barring a turnover of some type, that's going to lock it up for the Flyers. They're faithful, recognize, and will come to their feet. Marion Locals won 37 in a row. Looking they, to make it 38. I was going to say, they had to work for number 38. This is two very good high school football teams. They'll go into victory formation. Knopf under center. Arns the snap. The knee. I'll have to do it one more time. Versailles was looking to snap a 12-game loser, 11-game losing streak. I beg your pardon. They hadn't beat Marion Local in 11 years since this day in 2012. Marion Locals won 37 in a row, looking to make it 38. With two teams with state championship aspirations in Division VI and Division VII. One more knee from Knopf. Does it. And Marion Local hangs on to grab a 14-13 victory over the Versailles Tigers. Garrett, this is one of the, exactly what we expected to come out of this particular football game. Two teams, very well schooled, very well coached. Both teams played extremely hard this evening. And the break just went the way of the Mary Local Flyers late and they win 14-13. We'll step aside. Come back and put a bow on this one. Flyers victorious 14 to 13 over Versailles here on WOSN. Back here at Booster Stadium wrapping up a 14-13 victory for the Marion local Flyers over the Versailles Tigers. And Mark, I think we thought coming in we were going to get a barn burner and it lived up to the expectations. It really did. And this looked like two teams worthy of being a potential state champions. Two teams were ranked number one in their particular divisions coming into tonight. And both teams executed when they had to, when you think about it. You know, the Flyers are down 7-0. They come back, they get it tied up at 7. We end the first half that way. The Flyers come out and score. And then they, they get a couple of stops, did the, the, the Versailles, and they just turn into that really nice touchdown pass and one unfortunate play for the Versailles Tigers. But this is a very, very good football team. Mm -hmm. Both teams are very, very good. And you can expect them to be uh, in the MAC race yet for the season and at the same time. I'll go a long way to state playoffs. Versailles gets a Busher electric touchdown with two minutes and six seconds to go to make it 14-13. And Joel Garrett, who had just a whale he of the did. final drive. I think they had 16 plays on the final drive, and he carried right. it at least 10 times right. on the final drive to get them there, but missed the extra point, missed a field goal earlier that was 37 yards, hit the upright. Right. right. Probably 5% of high school kickers can <laughs> kick a 37-yard <laughs> right. field goal, and you just feel for the young man that just when – you need it, and your legs are shot by the time yes, you get absolutely. down there to kick that extra point. It just the, couldn't go the through. The other side about that is, Garrett, when we start picking up teams and, you know, who you want on your football, I want Osborne on my football team. Oh, absolutely. That young man has he played a wonderful game. He ran the football. He passed the football. He controlled what his team did offensively. He was in on defense. He was in on some special team stuff. Michael Osborne is a flat-out football player, but – on the other side, Mary Local, as they do, found a way to win. With team football spreading the wealth a little bit, playing great defense, I beg your pardon, that leads them to their 38th consecutive victory and 11th straight over Versailles. The final score, the final time, Mary and Local beats Versailles 14 to 13 in a matchup between the number one ranked teams in Division VI and Division VII. For our entire WOSN crew, and Mark Shynum, Garrett Seawright saying so long, and we'll catch you next time right here on WOSN. <laughs>